One of the things that makes the underground so interesting for us tube nerds is the number of old and often obsolete features still in place, kept there for, basically, funsies. They don't serve much of a purpose, they're just interesting to look at. And one of the best known must be the recently refurbished platform indicators at Earl's Court. These are on the district line platforms and, well, you can see what they do. A lit up arrow points to the destination of the next train. On the eastbound platform there's a screen above to indicate which train leaves first. These aren't the only analogue indicators on the network, there are also some at nearby Gloucester Road, but these are undoubtedly the most famous. Earl's Court Station was built by the Metropolitan District Railway. Originally, when the line was laid down in 1869, there was no station here, and local residents were quite insistent that it should remain that way. At that time, the only line here was the one to West Brompton. In 1871, a new branch was built to High Street Kensington to connect with what would become the Circle Line. So a station was considered very necessary. Regardless of local opinion, a station opened on the 30th of October. In 1872, a branch opened to Kensington Olympia, or as it was known then, Addison Road. In 1874, the district was extended to Hammersmith. So as you can see, it really didn't take long for Earl's Court to go from a place not even worthy of stopping at to a major district railway hub. Over the coming decades, the line would run to such diverse destinations as Richmond, Wimbledon, Hounslow, Ealing Broadway, Barking, Upminster, and even Southend. With so many routes and a very frequent service, I'm sure you can appreciate the need for a simple way to tell where your train is going. The indicators date from 1905, and that is a significant year. It's time for the obligatory appearance of Charles Yerkes, the American transport entrepreneur behind an awful lot of the underground network. In the late 19th century, electrified tube trains began to appear, first the City and South London Railway, then the Waterloo and City Railway, then the Central London Railway. More schemes were being proposed, and it looked like the Steam Hall District Railway was going to be left behind. Charles Yerkes had experience in American public transport systems, and particularly electric streetcars in Chicago. He offered his services as a man good at raising money with lots of useful electrical contacts. I mean, contacts in the electrical industry. The district readily accepted his help. It was a mutually beneficial arrangement. They got their modernisation. Yerkes had an excuse to get away from the vengeful investors he'd ruined in America. In 1901, he set up the Metropolitan District Electric Traction Company. Soon, he would acquire control of the entire district railway. In 1903, the first electrified section opened between Ealing and South Harrow. In 1905, a huge power station was built at Lotts Road in Chelsea, to provide power for the district and anything else Yerkes Empire might require. And in that same year, on the 1st of July, the entire line from Ealing to Whitechapel was electrified. And that's where the indicators come in. The district was a modern electric railway, so of course everything about it had to be modern and electric. These indicators were very much in line with that at the time. While the rest of the network has switched to more modern indicators, these ones remain in place and are in fact Grade 2 listed. They have undergone modifications over the years. Originally, they used light bulbs, and these have been replaced with fluorescent tubes. The destination signs have been replaced as the enamel has faded. But substantially, they're still very much the same units as were installed back in 1905. One modification that seems to have been made, but no one seems to know when, is the installation of a light barrier. There was an odd little quirk where, when the sunlight was angled just right, it would shine through the indicator and cause all the arrows to appear illuminated. These aren't the only means of getting information at Earl's Court. There are announcements, of course, and these days there are dot matrix indicators. The latter have a distinct advantage over the old indicators in that they can display a wider range of destinations and, indeed, other information the staff might need to communicate with passengers. There are plenty of places a district train might end up that have no corresponding sign, so it's good to have an alternative. Despite being venerable antiques, they operate in a very modern fashion. 
like the dot matrix indicators, they receive their information from the signalling system to provide up to the second information on where your train will come in, which I guess makes them a sort of digital analogue hybrid. In March 2022, commuters were horrified to see that the indicators had been taken out of service. There was nothing to fear, though. They were just being reconfigured and connected up to the district's new signals. Passengers breathed a sigh of relief when the signs returned this summer. The whole thing had been a distinctly arrowing experience. Good evening. I hope you enjoyed this illuminating tale from the Tube. If you did, please do click the like button and subscribe for more on the Tubes and whatever crazy jibber-jabber takes my fancy this week. Thanks as always to my donors on Kofi and Patreon. You are the arrow to my destination. And I'll see you all again very soon. Cheerio.